Greetings, gamers. It's been a while. But I'm back. I am finally back. I'm going to be playing some de Death and Taxes to the surprise of, I'm sure, everybody. Thank you, Jarvis, very much for the raid while I was uh, while we were in the waiting room. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, who's sticking around. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I... I'm a Macaleth. You can find me Macaleth basically anywhere on the internet. Uh, I play DNC and Legacy, and that's all I really do. Um, very proudly so. First time streaming since Grief was banned. It's kind of weird that it was only ten days ago because it feels like it was already a lot longer and longer than that. But you know, the passage of time, huh? Uh, yes, there is a running prediction for whether we will uh, kill someone with this card right here I'll talk about in a second. Should I call you Akleth in person? Please don't. You, it's, it's okay when people do, but you know, don't unless it's natural to you, you know. Um, anyway, so post, post grief ban, um, I posted on Twitter a series of deck lists that I think were interesting to look into, um, one of which is the Red Splash. Um, Oh my God, chat's already going off. I haven't even talked yet. Ah! P Katie, please don't call me Akaleth in person. I'm literally begging you. Anyway, so the nice thing about the Red Splash is that presumably after Grief is banned, but while Psychic Frog is still legal, Pyroblast looks like a pretty good card if you assume that you know the average deck in Legacy probably has Psychic Frog in it, if not you know just the normal blue suite of spells. Um, the other nice thing you get from the Red Splash is Magus of the Moon, which shores up some potentially iffy matchups. Like, uh, it's a really good against lands. It's pretty decent. It's quite good against Cloud Post, pretty decent against Eldrazi. Um, and I played a list like that. Um, it kind of, it looked definitely a lot like basically what the Red Splash DNT lists looked like kind of like two years ago. Um, back when the two problem decks that we were targeting were eight mulch and eight cast. Um, they were okay. Uh, the The main problem I had was that like, because it felt like the format hadn't really quite solidified yet. So there's a lot of decks that are not either good against, either weak to Pyroblast or to Magus, which then just left me feeling like in a lot of my matches, I was just, I just accidentally played like a worse build of the deck and I would have much rather have just been on you know, slightly modified black splash that's been, that I think would still perform quite well. Um, but good old XJ Cloud uh, has been trying out this list that uh, cuts the Thalias for Ajani Nakadal Pariah. Uh, this card is currently tearing up modern um, and broadside bombardier is known legacy staple at this point. This card makes people explode. Um, and I'm interested in that. You know, I, I wrote about Ajani in my Modern Horizons 3 uh, card review article in that, like, I didn't think that this card fit in with what DNT wants to do, but it also is just good enough on rate that I could see it being good enough regardless. Um, and I think the main limitation, obviously, is, like, the main reason that Ajani is good is the fact that it's zero is removal if you have a red permanent. But there aren't that many red permanents you want to play. Bombardiers kind of fixes that. There's going to be Chainsaw coming up in Duskmorn that also sort of fixes that. Um, and I think that makes Ajani's flip side a lot more consistently threatening. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting to try out. Um, I have not played this list yet. We're going to give it a shot. Um, and hopefully we, uh, hopefully we blow some people up. Again, there's a prediction. There's some, there are some real hello i'm trying to get out of my league that i played earlier there we go um there are some real points on this prediction here for whether we kill someone with bomba uh it's going to be it's going to be some dreams made some in one way or one direction or another so i'm not sure how you do the watch streak thing i think usually for stuff like that twitch will just like pop something up in the chat window sometimes of like hey this is this thing do you want to do you want to post about it or whatever um 
but I don't know for sure. I am not. I, I admittedly don't think I've gotten a watch streak on a stream. I might be wrong. I'm not sure. But anyway, glad you're playing the original Pyroblast of Red Elemental Blast. Yeah, I, you know, they, they're they both basically the same. I like the original Pyroblast art. It's the, I'm probably, if I'm playing a build like this in paper and I have to get foils, I will be getting foil Pyroblasts specifically. Um, I uh, am going to try to get the future site foil pyroblasts if those are not exorbitantly expensive but we'll see if not then yeah the the eternal masters pyroblasts or whatever it's going to be totally fine i like i like that art it's total there's nothing wrong with it you're a bad watch streaker that's okay look i'm glad when anybody watches my stream for any amount of time Appreciate y'all. I have been friends with him way too long to revoke his fan card. I'm sorry, Chileth. I've known Viscaj much longer than you. Yeah, I I think I read a a synopsis that like they're probably that like the rarity is comparable to like TSR foils, which is not a great <laughs> sign for a product that's mostly going to be opened at conventions. There are some available at the stores. There's the the um uh I don't remember. I know that there was a product that like anybody could buy, but like it's not like I feel like less Mystery Booster 2 is going to be opened than TSR unless enough Mystery Booster is opened because of the chase of the Future Sight cards. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to wait a little bit. I assume they are going to be way more money than I'm willing to pay for them, but we'll see. And there are like so many cards I want to. They, there's so many cards that look sick. The Mind Break Trap looks awesome. I want the Pyro Blasts. Uh, the I don't know if I would use the ports, but the ports look cool. The, there's the Vial. What else is there? Um, there's a Rest in Peace that looks decent. Um, there's a lot of them. They did a really good job picking cards in general. Yeah, it really is. I have them in my box of stuff that aren't in my DNT deck right now, and it's it's always sad when I go by them. It's like they're so pretty, but it, they're not in my deck. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> yeah, the the white border spirit of the labyrinths are pretty disappointing. I don't remember what else. There's Path Path to Exile that we play. Is there anything else? Because there's Wastelands, right? Wastelands and White Border. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot about Container Priest and Skyclave. Yeah. Yeah, Blue got like 40, or it was like... Tw I remember Blue got over twice as many Future Sight cards as White did. Um, which was a little tilting, but blue's gonna get everything. Um, yeah, the Skyclave I'm not too upset about because we at least have a cool promo for it. Um, it's almost triple. Okay, damn. All right, prediction is locked. I didn't see what the uh, I did not see what the final percentages were, but. All right, we're finally in it.
Interesting. So we can't cast Magus. Sand's pretty slow. It's basically a six card hand and it's only three drops really. And I'm on the draw. So I am going to go to six. This looks a lot better. I'm gonna get rid of a solitude. Uh, so you're thinking of Fenris Cloud. He's the person who only plays Infect. Basic Island into Wasteland. What does that mean? Well, I think we can pretty easily just get planes, planes, then we have mountain to cast the Magus if the Magus looks good. I like that we are gonna get to probably cast a Johnny into Bomba, our very first match, or very first game with this deck. So, yeah, Toast has been through it. It's okay. Uh, Brazen Borrower on the cat. Yeah, sure. Two wastelands, huh? I'm not really sure what to make of that yet. Um, since I have Stoneforge, though, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start by casting Stoneforge. Force pitching Merc Tide. Okay. Fine by me. So this could just be Delver that kept, that notably has a basic island in their deck and then just kept it even though it didn't do anything, which seems very strange. Yeah, I feel like there's a color that they should have in play but don't, and they just brainstorm locked themselves. I'm very confused. Um, <sighs> what am I doing here? Um, I am going to play this Magus and see what happens. I, th I think it, there is definitely a possibility that like it just gives them red mana that they need, but I would rather get that information, I think. Um, And I, I, I think I agree that blue-black probably makes the most sense. Yeah, I think like I would rather put them in a situation where they have to bolt them, I guess, because if like their bolt's not going to be dead all game, right? So... It almost seems easier to see they they pondered and did not shuffle, notably. 
That's weird. Okay. Um, I guess we'll see what's going on over there. Do you, are you using a bolt? Are you doing anything? I would think the ponder means they're dead, except for the fact that they didn't shuffle. That's the weirdest part to me. Okay, it did give them red mana. Maybe that's why they kept on the ponder. Just they were it, they found the bolt off the ponder as a possibility. Force pitch ponder on the recruiter. Okay, you got it. That's two force of wills used. Is this a frog? Yep, okay. Uh, since they are just F6ing, we'll get the Bomba in. If they had an F6, that would probably cast the Vile there, but maybe even not, because getting the getting another threat in play is kind of important here. So it looks like they're just Grixis Delver at this point. Got it. Oh, jeez. Child, if you can hear me, I think it's not you. Can y'all can y'all hear me? OBS is showing red, but I don't know what that means. I'm seeing some dropped frames, but I'm also seeing some stuff go out, so it's hard to tell. And Moto's going fine. But nobody's responding to me, so I'm a little worried. Uh, it's looking, looking totally fine on my end now. Is anybody there? Hello? Yeah, okay. I don't know what that was. It was it definitely hit a blip. I just don't know what it was from. Um, okay, time to figure out how to sideboard with this deck. So I'm pretty sure I want all of these. Um, Spot removal is great. Wrath of the Skies is pretty decent. Um, it's good against everything but Murktide. Um, I don't think I want Magus because, it, you know, we just kind of saw it. Even if Magus doesn't turn off the main piece of removal that they have, and I also think, like, most of the games... That, that was a weird game for Magus to matter. <laughs> um, most of the time, we're just going to be under pressure pretty quickly. Um, so, um, I don't really want Cauldra. I don't really 
want GTA. I don't want Lauren. Um, I might want one of the two equipment because right now I actually literally only have sashes and equipment, so I might want I might need to keep GTA or I might I guess I'll probably keep Calder instead of GTA. Um, I'm wondering if this is not really a matchup for bombardiers honestly just because like most of the games are going to be pretty low resource um so i'm wondering if like the proactivity of bombardiers is not really something that we're interested in specifically against delver we just want all of our cards to be good on their own and i think boarding like this pretty much pretty much accomplishes that Let's try that. Yeah, I could see having one bombardier. I also also notably boarding like this gives us zero red permanence in the deck for Ajani, I'm realizing. So we'll see. Um if I miss Spear of Leonidas, unfortunately not. Uh that card just did not I th I think that card is fun and cool, but not good. Um, it's a two lander this cauldron is pretty bad but like the rest of the hand is pr is the hands good enough I think yeah I'll keep it's potentially weak to a wasteland but we'll see cut a wisp board in Yorion board out Yorion for a bomba genius just find another fetch land or a basic would be fine too Nope. Okay. Probably one of the better non-lands for us to draw, though. And this is a frog coming down. Okay. So you have a couple options here. And the first question is, do we want to play into days? And if we do want to play into days, are we getting a plateau or are we getting a basic mountain? I think that we want to get a plateau here. Um... Could just get a planes. Mm. Hmm. That's interesting. I think I can do enough off of this Witch Enchanter that I'm okay. Oh, nice. Edge at the land, nice. Um, what am I doing? I guess I'm just going to slam a Johnny. Yeah. Hey, XJ Cloud, how's it going? Thanks for the deck list. Appreciate it. I don't know if I boarded right against Delver, but I'm not sure it'll matter. Kind of love that, like, 
playing Caracas out here just forces them to bolt the Ajani right away, and I like just don't care about that at all. Yeah, so for what it's worth, I um I cut the the two Magus and the four Bombas and the Lauren for a for the four Pyroblasts, I have two Path to Exiles and a and the one Wrath of the Skies. Um, I wasn't sure about cutting the Bomba. My, basically, my thought was like, Bombas or you know, the matchup against Delver is usually pretty low resources. I'd rather have cards that like are good on their own in a way Bombardiers isn't. I'm not sure if that works out in the sense that like I have cut all of my red permanents for the for the Ajani Zero. I'm not sure, but that's the decision I made, at the very least. I would love to destroy target permanent if it is blue. Cool. Yeah, and that was coming... I didn't even get... I. I guess I technically got one in play in game one, but that was just off of a gut feel, not like any actual play experience. One tutorable painter servant. Okay. Should have attacked first to bait them to throw my card away. Yeah, that would have been smart, actually. Oh, no. I see what's going after my plateau. Yeah, that's fine. It's kind of fun being in a, in a position to, like, actually attack my opponent with a 2-1 again. My opponent has to, like, play threats, though. What's going on? Where are their DRCs? Yeah, well, that's why you play you play the uh, Imperial Recruiter. You play one Imperial Recruiter so that you can Recruiter of the Guard for Imperial Recruiter for Painter Servant. Perfect. Flawless combo. Um, I think I am happy to play around days here for a turn. Um, just because they, they could have it at this point. I'm not totally sure, but I think I'm happy to just put Yorn in my hands. I guess I'm not playing around days. If they don't do anything, then I'll just I'll just play Witch and Chainer tapped, so What's in my opponent's hand, importantly? Could be like a land Maybe they could be like a day, could be a counter spell. I feel like it's like land counter spell, something else. I feel like if they had a Merc Tide, even for just a 5-5, five five, they would have slammed it by now. So um, I think that this is a situation where I'm happy to pay three mana to make a days in their hand, still not do anything. I might look a little silly if next turn my recruiter gets dazed, but I guess a bolt makes sense because they're not really excited about killing my 2-1 <laughs> cat token. That that makes some sense. Another wasteland. Okay. All right, let's see. Am I the fool? Wow. 
All right. I have no idea what's going on over there. So I have a solitude already, which makes me, I think I just want to get a stone forge. Yeah. Especially with this cauldron in hand. I'm gonna preemptively. I, I have. Yeah, okay, Toast already got it. I was gonna type an exclamation point for more. I was gonna wait until the Stone Horde resolved, but this is undoubtedly a formal wear moment. Yeah, where's our chainsaw? Let's go. Okay, I've never, like... I cannot remember the last time I played against Delver and just, like, attacked them like this. This is really weird. This is bizarre. Um, I'm just going to get a Lion Sash here, I think. Eh, I don't have a lot of white mana. Eh, whatever, Lion Sash. All right, Chyleth, calm down. Is this a Molten Collapse? Looks like Molten Collapse on Stoneforge, probably. Yeah, you got it. Okay, deck. Wow, Toast, you you punted? What the f what's <sighs> My opponent did not shuffle off of Ponder, so <clears throat> whatever they got, they like it. Hmm. I would not want to be casting Brainstorm in this position. They found the fourth wastelands. Okay. Chill out. <laughs> Play fourth wastelands. Use it. Concede. Refuse to elaborate. A joyful waffle. Traditionally, also a Delver player. We'll see if we're run. We'll see if we're running this back. I would prefer this hand on the play, but I'll still keep it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't want to think too hard about it because I feel like the fact that my opponent never played... They played like two or three creatures that entire match, so they definitely kept hands they just shouldn't have. Ooh, Meticulous Archive. Interesting. It could be breakfast, could be beans. 
days seems more likely to be breakfast than beans. Ooh. Could be stifle knot, that is also a possibility. I think I just want to start with spirit. I think this might be stifle knot. There's a lot of time to think about a fetch. Yep, okay. This is like a hundred thousand percent a doorkeeper thrall that they're holding up mana for. So I'm not going to cast Stoneforge into it. I'm just going to hope that there's like a manageable number of dreadnoughts that are about to be cast. <laughs> a manageable number is zero. Hell yeah. Manageable number, indeed. Um, yeah, I need to find like a Bombardier's or something like that fast. Um, at least get to attack kind of with impunity here. Oh boy. Yeah, Bombardier is, as an answer to Thrall is like really theoretically nice. I hope that it actually works out. They just have to cycle that dress down. Yep, just a cycle dress down. Okay. So do I would I rather surveil or put Yorion in my hand? Um, I think since my opponent is not currently killing me with anything, I think I would rather have Yorion in my hand. Just casting a four or five flyer next turn looks honestly pretty good. I guess it looks less good if it gets hard cast forced, but what are you going to do? Oh, not getting hard cast forced. Not that that's better, but. Right on time. Um. So I guess we just have to draw swords to plowshares at this rate, basically. Yeah, I will go down to two. I'm 
Fujite would also do it. Caracas does not. Yep. Okay. Bummer. Thankfully, we got some good cards here. Uh, this Wrath of the Skies. We only have one of them, but it will be incredible. Um, path is good. And I'll think about these Pyroblasts. The Pyroblasts are like only really good at like defending my um, removal spells from counter magic. Pyroblast isn't good like reactively. Bombo would uh yes it would have been lethal. Yeah, because I attack for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're at like fourteen, so then I just throw your end for seven. Yeah. Okay. So I had so I had nine outs there, basically. Okay. So I definitely want these. Um I'm not sure what I want to cut. This doesn't really feel like a Magus matchup. Um I think we need GTA in our deck just to have a density of answers for a resolved doorkeeper thrall. Um, Lion Sash is pretty bad here, though. Let's call it there, I guess. Maybe there's something I cut for some pyroblasts, but I don't really. I don't think I see it really. I just feel like it's not really consistent enough at like trading one for one, except for in scenarios where I feel like I'm playing pretty heavily into days. So let's reveal this Yorion. Oh boy, that's a mulligan. This isn't really better. Vorath, thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome everybody. We are playing some Legacy Death and Taxes with a red splash. Currently down a game versus a very bad matchup for us, generally speaking. Uh, yeah, I really can't keep this. This is something. I'll put on him the Wisp and the Waste, I guess. Yeah, we'll try that. You vintage and audio, nice. So the hopes, hopes here are my opponent does not have Doorkeeper Thrall. <laughs> Always pray that Doorkeeper Thrall is not in the picture. Um, if they put a Dreadnought into play any other way, then I have even more answers for it. But, um, but, uh... As is often the case, Doorkeeper Thrall feeling pretty unbeatable at the moment. They're passing with two mana up and a white source to fetch. Not feeling great for me. Source to Plushers? No. Could be worse. I guess what I can do is... If I cast a Bombardier's and just attack, then it puts my opponent in a position where they can't really just play Doorkeeper Thrall and pass because I can just throw my Vial at the Thrall. But is that better than waiting until the following turn? Because then what I could do is like Violin, Bombardier's, 
around counter magic, throw the vial at the um, doorkeeper thrall, and then I have two answers in my hand for a dreadnought. I think I I think I like bomba attack too. There's only so much that I can beat right now, <laughs> realistically. So. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a good night. I have swords for the bomba. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're on Dreadnought. stop okay okay i can live with the dress down i can live less with a dress down into null drifter I was more okay with Dress Down into Dreadnought. this vial was on four as always although i guess i probably needed to keep keep it on three here regardless uh yeah yes annihilator indeed Hey, finally one of those cards I wanted to play. Okay. Um boy. Let's What do I want to pitch here? Get rid of the Lauren. It's the most replaceable. I'm not sure the Yorion's going to matter in this match anyway. Oh boy, yeah, we are super dead. I'm guessing Consign's just in their deck. I'll give us like one more turn to find a removal spell and then we'll call it. You 
You know what? No, I'll call it. We're good. <laughs> I can move on. GG's, GG's. Uh, nice. Passage you into noble hierarchy. Okay. What does that mean? It's going to get two planes here. I'm sure I'll get immediately punished not having a red source, but we'll see. Uh, Noble Hierarch sure implies that a GTA is going to be good, so I'm going to get that. Yeah, I was wondering if it was just in your deck, honestly. Like, that would not totally surprise me. Okay, so we're definitely playing against the Nadu deck. Um, they did not play another land. What I'm currently thinking is if I wasteland the Besage you and then pitch Stone Forest to the Solitude on the Delighted Halfling, um, then I just get to GTA them next turn and kill their Land of War Elves and Noble Hierarch, and then they just like lose. If they. Yeah, like they, the the main punish is them top decking a land and playing Nadu, but they clearly don't have a land in hand or they would have just already done that. So I think I just like keep things under wraps while I still have the opportunity to. And yeah, I want to get rid of the halfling specifically because it's the only thing with more than one toughness here. Yeah, Cradle would be bad. Any land is not great. I can live with Nomads. I can live with another Land of War Elves. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think just taking the damage is probably right. Um, so from here, I just want to kill mana. And this is even a cradle off the top here just gives them three green mana. It doesn't give them any, any mana to cast, any blue mana to cast Nadu with, importantly. All right, cool. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of cards I potentially want here. Um, all these seem great. The Nadu combo decks have four Green Sun Zenith and four Court of Calling. Um, so Graph Digger's Cage, Containment Priest are great. Path is good. Targeted removal, Wrathless Guys is just literally going to be a Wrath of God against them for the most part. Um, not 100% sure about the Pyroblasts because Nadu is literally the only blue card in their deck that we care about. And they can also notably make it uncounterable with um, Delighted Halfling, so not totally sure there. But um, the Spirit of Labyrinths don't look good because they don't. I don't think 
they have any effects that draw cards. They might have like one Elvish Visionary, but I think that's basically it. We don't really want Lauren. We don't really want Lion Sash, and then that's it. Well, that was easy. Um, so I think we probably want some number of Pyroblasts over like Dopey 3 drops then, right? This also doesn't feel like a Magus matchup. So maybe that's where the pyroblasts come from. Just trimming the, th just trimming like the clunky threes, I guess. Yeah, seems fine. It's a six card hand. Uh, could. I feel like the. There's not. This kind of hand doesn't really get much value out of this wasteland because we don't really have a way to, like, put pressure on them afterwards. So, like, denying them mana doesn't feel super important here. Um,. I'm gonna. I, I don't expect this to be very good, but I'm gonna try it. At the very least, like, I, I do also have to keep in mind, like, they can't, like, play a turn to Nadu with a. Like, playing a turn to Nadu with a combo piece also, I think, is, like, not trivial. Like, here, this next turn, if they, like, go land, uh, land Nadu, then, like, I can still just kill the Nadu. Um, yeah, GTA. <laughs> yeah, GTA is really good at, against Nadu, other than the card Nadu. Um, yeah, so I can just play Aramesa Pass here. I could, like, Wasteland Arbor. I, th I think I'd actually probably be more likely to Wasteland the Tropical Island, honestly, but... Stoneforge is a great draw in terms of both getting GTA and also turning this Cauldra into a real card, so that's nice. Land of War Elves, okay. Cradle into Nadu, okay. I will give them a single Nadu trigger cool um can't really imagine there's a play other than just casting stone forge right i could wasteland the cradle but then i'm just slowing myself down so much maybe i have to though uh, I have two cards in hand. Um, yeah, yeah, cord is a really important reason to. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll. We'll try it. This is my first time playing against it, so I'll. Very new to me. We'll figure it out as we go. If only we had a Pyroblast in our hands. That would make me feel a lot better. Okay. I could waste them off of blue here, potentially, if I draw another one, but I don't. That's okay. Alright, crossing my fingers. I mean, I think if they had Nadu, they would have cast it here, right? So.
they could potentially cord for it or whatever, but. Okay, I think we got out of it alive. Um, and that's nice because, ooh. I was gonna say I could skyclave the nomads now. Um, I guess that's probably still better, right? Because the problem with holding up Pyroblast is they're more likely to green sun or cord for the Nadu than they are to like draw it and play it off of the top. And so for that reason, I think I just want to kill the nomads now. Now the question is, if they have a cord in their hand, how, I guess how likely is it? I guess they would have, they had to, must have, if I remember right, it would have had to be a top deck because they could have cast it for Nadu last turn if they made a different play, I think. I could be wrong about that. Don't think they've had a shot. Okay, so it's possible they could cord for Nadu now. In which case, I wouldn't really want to go for Gta because it um, basically my stone for or one of my creatures dies. Essentially, I don't get the Cauldra in play, and I can't really even use the Gta because then they're just drawing cards off of it. So I think that I just want to keep this Pyroblast up as long as possible, up until the point that there is an enabler in play, at which point there's not much of a reason to hold up the Pyroblast. But Cauldra at least puts some pressure on them, so that's nice. Strass Daddy, how's it going? What's up? Harry, thank you so much for the resub. How's it going? Hello, everybody. I'm back. It's been a while. Doing my best to beat up a Nadu player right now. Pantera CLC, thank you so much for the follow. Hello, welcome. Hope you had a good stream, Stress Daddy. Yep, here is the cord for Nadu. I feel very smart. Destroy target permanent if it's blue on Nadu. Bam. You get one card. You get another cord, okay. So they can get another Nadu if they have, they would need to have an enabler in play. Halfling doesn't do it.
so I think now I just have to get GTA counters, right? Um, I can put it on Cauldra, so at least they can't like block and they have to cord for Nadu right away um, before I start killing their stuff. Yeah, and then I can bounce the Nadu next turn and start making some progress. Yeah, that all makes sense to me. Um, I guess I'll not really a reason to use the Stoneforge. Yeah, I think if they hit the Enabler, we're dead, but not much to do about that. Oh, they have swords. Okay. Interesting. I think I'm happier that they did that than corded for Nadu. Oh, they cast Nadu. They top tech Nadu. Okay, so now they get to cord for cord for uh, Nomads and we're dead. Okay. Um, I think I am happy with how we boarded. This hand is awful. This hand is terrible. This hand is better. Um, it's not amazing. I don't love that like we kind of want to blow them out with this Wrath of the Skies, but we also want to cast this Vile, but we also want to cast this Containment Priest. I'm honestly thinking about putting the Vile on the bottom. <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm going to put Vile on the bottom here. <sighs> Found a Vile again. Okay, um... Yeah, I think I just cast a Johnny here. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping they were just going to play like land or elf something else here, but I think we are just going to be happy with killing Dryad Arbor and Halfling, right? This looks pretty good for us. No point, no reason to attack with a Johnny, so. Uh, I was supposed to play a Plains here. Oops. Because this fetch could get an elegant parlor next turn. They have endurance in their deck? Okay. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why Endurance is in their deck. <laughs> um.
Cat's getting big. Damn it. I was hoping they would have to cord for it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to bother putting them through it. Okay. That was frustrating. I do not know why they have endurance in their deck, but okay. Shut up, Toast. I think it's fair to say that, like, whether or not Nadu is of power level concerns in the context of Legacy, the card is really lame. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. And I don't think that it... Any any game where Nadu enters play is not one where that I'm really interested in playing. So uh, I don't know if it'll be too good, but I would really like it to not exist. <laughs> Oh yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I, I, yeah, I just don't know if it's gonna need it, but it should be. Let's put it that way. Um, can't keep this. I can keep this. Um, guess I'll put one of the put one of the parlors back in my deck. Yeah, I I I hope that it is good enough to get looked at. Is kind of, I think, like the starting point. It's got to ramp into a seven mana do nothing enchantment. I love it. I know it's do something specifically against Nadu, but otherwise pretty do nothing. I think y'all are cooking. I think something might be burning down in the kitchen, guys. Goodbye, Stoneforge. My opponent missed a land drop. Interesting, interesting. Get rid of your academy rectors. Don't touch you. Don't worry. Rector won't ever be good again. It's okay. What a one lander opponent. So I think they're just on reanimator, right? Based on the thoughtsies. Uh, yeah, I'll take. I'll keep that actually. Please cast brainstorm. I'm begging you.
Oh. Is it literally just storm? <laughs> it's just storm. Okay. Got it. I'm going to make them show me the tendrils in their deck. Never mind. All right, we don't have like anything because storm isn't real. The storm can't hurt me. Um, but these are probably all good enough. Certainly better than removal. Um, Get rid of swords, GTA, solitudes. Uh... Get rid of sky, get rid of wisps, I guess. Sure, let's do it. Why am I on the draw? Did I misclick? I might have misclicked. Oh well. I have like two cards that matter. I, I think I'm, I, I'm not feeling too great about my chances anyway. But my opponent's mulliganing, so hopefully we get to mulligan together. But I find my Thalia. <laughs> Wasteland and Surgical. Surgical is like not even good against Current Ant is the big problem. Uh, yeah, we got to find something. Jesus Christ. Um, Not right now, Jax. All right. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I have I've like drawn it like twice. All right, that's that's part of the problem. Okay. Well, I can certainly live with that. Just don't kill me next turn. All right. I don't know why they kept their six, but I'll take it for, oh, wow. Okay.
chat. We're still in this one. Swagger Hot, thank you so much for Prime Sub. Three months, thank you so much. Oh my god, chat. Chat, is this real? Oh, there's dressing down? Sure. No, stop. Don't do it. Well, I dealt them enough damage that... Oh, my God. They hit four cantrips at the start. And now they hit empty. They do get to empty here for a bunch, right? What's Storm? Uh, why can the storm counter appear, please? Five. So they get 14. No, 16. They get 16. Um... It's not over? Um, all right, so we're definitely starting with attacking them. Down to three. Do I want Yorion in my hand? I guess I'm not doing anything else with this mana either way. Actually, or no, I don't have Solitude in my deck, so never mind. Um, Wrath of the Skies kills. Bombardier's kills. Um, what else? Recruiter kills because of Bomba. We don't have any removal, so we can't deal with them holding back any goblin tokens as blockers. Um... But yeah, I guess we're just looking for those nine cards off of this, off of this surveil. That's not it. killed 
Uh, actually, no, because we don't have the mana to cast it, so never mind. All right, one second. I have to deal with Jax. I'll be right back. up and back. All right, let's get this league out of here. I think we were supposed to not up Vile there. I have four Stoneforge and three Recruiters. Yeah, but Stoneforge wasn't lethal, right? That's also not counting the... Uh, I guess we don't... Right, because if we draw Bombardiers off the top, we don't need the... We don't need the... Vile to be on two. Or on, yeah, need the Vile to be on three. I had four white mana, yes. Yeah, we need we need five mana for Sash to give us lethal. Because we need Yeah, because it's two two to put into play, two to two to equip, one to eat a card. So we were one mana off of that, unfortunately. They were at three.
Yeah, right. If you, once you reconfigured Sash, it doesn't do anything until you spend a mana. So there we go. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. Good enough for me. Last seen playing Gruel Initiative. Okay. Whatever you say. <sighs> it might still be Gruel Initiative. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. All right, there is a red or green initiative card. The nice thing is that I have a hasty creature to take the initiative right away if they put it into play. Are they exiling three? Go okay, there they go. They just forgot to... All right, cool. All right, yeah, it's going to be sick. Um, I think I want to keep this just because it's a good curve. Lay uh, wait, no, cause uh, no, cause I, yeah, okay, cool. I am gonna keep this. All right, swords that. Um, the reason I'm keeping mom is that next turn, it gives lets me use all of my mana to, um, play recruiter and mom. And this is a matchup that ultimately just gets decided by how many creatures you have in play. <laughs> um, so the more of those I have, the better. And worst case scenario, it's guaranteeing that I have a white card to pitch to this solitude that isn't recruiter. You know, if they had spirit guide bolt, good for them. Nice, they revealed a different different lands. This, okay, another under mountain, sure. Damn it. I was really looking forward to throwing my recruiter at the under mountain adventurer. Okay, so yeah, I think here I am just getting a solitude. I need to pitch this mom to the other solitude, get this undermount out of here. And I'll play this as my land. It's like pretty mid, but it is also a lot of creatures in play. It's 
like okay. Yeah. Yeah, being a two drop is definitely valuable here. Got it. Goad Recruiter into their Elvish Spirit Guide. Just don't, just don't do it, kids. Never, never use Arena. Just stay on whatever side of the dungeon you're already on. <laughs> I promise. Uh... Put both those on the bottom. Need more high impact stuff than that. Cool. All right, that's initiative for you. Uh, I'll bring in containment priest and path to exile. This doesn't feel like a Magus of the Moon matchup by any stretch or GTA. I think it's that easy. Blasts are bad, surgical is bad, everything else looks bad. Cool. Good a hand as any. Fable. Okay. I really want to wasteland this city of traders, but I just can't. I just can't do it. Got it, friend. I wonder how many basics they even have in their deck. Curious if this path to exile is just... Um, I do think I have to cast this path, though, for so I can use my mana effectively. Okay, so they do have three basics. Um, yeah, I'll get Cauldra. I mean, Sash isn't really doing anything here, so. Forge on the Goblin Shaman token. You got it. Two to three basics, two Taiga. Yeah, that sounds about right.
interesting. So this lets me so I can I imagine here they are trying to throw hmm, actually do I do anything in response here? I guess I probably don't, because if they're throwing the reflection at the stone forge, then that means I don't even have to use my solitude right now. So I'd rather wait to see what they use. I feel like they're probably using the goblin shaman. Um, yeah, okay. But now I get to draw and see. Bombardier would be sick, but no, that would be too easy. Um, Jax, not now. Uh, get the reflection out of here. Be really sad about the fact that we don't have a Caracas in play right now, but hopefully we'll find one soon. Um, and maybe we're supposed to actually just pitch this ash. We can solitude in response to anything they copy. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true because there's no, yeah, they can't copy the boo. Yeah, that's fair. Well, okay. Uh, I'm literally not dead, but only by the thinnest of margins. Yeah, okay. Look, guys, I'm trying. Dex really fighting with me over here. No, Trialeth. I will not be doing that. Cauldra addicted to my opening hand. I have a Caracas here. I feel like I, it's a pretty awkward hand, but I think I keep it. Fable gets exiled, they play another Fable. Okay. Do I want to play the Sash now? Or do I want to be able to play the Skyclave next turn? I think I want to be able to play the Skyclave next turn. Ooh, that's a really good one. And maybe I wasn't supposed to keep that. I'm not sure. I 
really like Mom Against Initiative. I'm not sure if that was keep on top of my deck worthy though, thinking about it more. Yeah, no, no bombardiers here. No, thank you. Fable. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Another bumper here. Okay. All right. At least they can't actually kill my Skyclave because everything they have is zeros. Um. Can I draw my own Bombardier? That would be kind of nice. No? Okay, I didn't really want to draw that many moms. Uh, and now my computer's lagging. Okay, sure. Yeah, I guess. We, I, I tried. I, I tried. Can you please just, okay, sure. All right. And we would have drawn a bombardier that last turn. Wouldn't have really made a difference, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry for all the believers, but I could barely win any games, let alone ones where I specifically won with Bombardier. So I will have to award points to the non-believers. Give me a second, I gotta get to my stream manager. Can you load, hello? There we go, all right, manage prediction. Unfortunately, it was a no. Unfortunately, it was a no. That whole stream felt like one big no. What a, what a return, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I felt like a lot of those... I mean, I guess like this was a bad matchup because that was Stifle Knot. This was a bad matchup because it was Storm. This was Nadu. That was literally my first time playing against it, and they drew pretty well. I th like they had to rip like basically perfect off the top in that second game to win. Um, and then 
I don't know. Sometimes red ancient tomb decks just draw every bombardier in their deck and then kill you. And I drew once again very few uh bombardier, so I didn't really get to play with it very much. I didn't get to sack any cat tokens to them. Um So that was sad. But we'll try it again in the future. Um thank you for the gifted sub Viscatch, really appreciate it. Just start splashing Hydro Blast. Uh, man, I would love nothing more than to splash Hydro Blast just so I don't have to just let Fable resolve all the time. It's the worst feeling in the world. The card's dumb. All right. Well, that is going to be it for me. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, if, you, if you're new, uh, I just came back from streaming it from a break. I always play D&T in Legacy of some, of some flavor. Uh, currently just exploring the post-grief legacy for the uh, first time, at least on stream. Um, I stream every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Follow me in all these places. Uh, if you missed any of this stream and want to check it out, the VOD will be uploaded to YouTube overnight. Um, uh, on my Patreon uh, for those unaware, um, I do have a uh, sideboard guide. I haven't updated it yet for post ban because I'm still trying to figure out where, what, um, what list I'm like feeling most confident about. Um, so uh, the five dollar Patreon um, sideboard guide is still in flux at this point in time, but I'm gonna hopefully be posting an update to that soon. Um, also on my Patreon, I have started writing my next matchup primer for lands. It's going to be long, but I think I have a lot to say about that matchup, and I hope it helps people because I think it is one of the hardest matchups that just exists. So, yeah, should be should be a good one. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, 420 for the uh for the gifted sub to chileth no less um much appreciated and i will see you all next time